Is everyone here? Yes, father. Good. Now do you remember where we stopped yesterday? Yes, father. You told us how Moses went and met Ramesses, the pharaoh of Egypt. Moses asked Ramesses to release his people from slavery and let them leave to the promised land. Very good, George. What happened after that, father? Ramesses got really angry when Moses asked him to free the slaves. In his anger, he doubled the work of Hebrew slave. Keep working, you lazy Hebrew slave. Ah. If you don't meet your quota today, then you will die. More bricks. More bricks. Who is he? He's Pharaoh's spy. Talk to him carefully. Huh? Pharaoh has Hebrews as spies? You have been away for a very long time, Moses. Are you happy now? They are making us work even harder now. All you have done is make everything worse. You should go and tell Pharaoh that you were wrong. I was helping you. We didn't ask for your help. Apologize. Apologize now. God, I did like you told me, but things have gotten worse now. Moses, go again to Pharaoh. I will make you like a god to him. Take your staff and dip it in the river. You shall multiply my wonders in this land, and by this they shall know that I am the Lord. I will do so, my lord. Moses, Pharaoh, the Lord God has commanded you to let the Hebrews leave. Who? The Lord God of trickery, is it? Out of my way, Moses. Behold his power. And Moses did as the Lord commanded. He lifted up his staff and dipped it in the river Nile. Throughout all the lands of Egypt, the water turned to blood. The fish died. and the river stank and the egyptians could not drink another clumsy bit of magic fine i don't have to drink water when i have wine you are so cold hearted pharaoh but lord god has instructed me i will show you that he is the one true god pharaoh cousin please let my people go This doesn't have to happen. Your people are going to suffer if you remain adamant. Some will die. Enough. I am the only god. And then he hit the ground with his staff and the dust became lice. Pharaoh's magicians could do nothing. But Pharaoh refused to let the slaves leave. Ah, oh, god. Pharaoh is not letting the people leave. He again raised his staff and hit the ground. This time, millions of frogs came out of the river. There were frogs everywhere. This time, it was a storm of flies. The cattle died 
the land stand. Bring me Moses. Yes, my lord. Ramesses. Ugh, you, you. How long will it take for you to realize that this is God's will? Don't hurt your people anymore. God commands you to let his people go. Don't think that you are greater than God. I am the God. If you don't want your people slain, then leave my city. Listen to me. God is sending one final plague tonight. At midnight today, he will kill every firstborn child in this kingdom. You are banished from this house. Banished. If I ever see your face again, then I'll kill you. If only you listened. Father. Yes, my son. I'm the firstborn son. I'm afraid. Don't worry, my son. These are just his tricks. This man is nothing. His God is nothing. Then Moses called for all elders of Israel and he said to them, God has spoken to me. Tonight you shall slaughter your lamp and mark your doors with its blood. Do not leave your home until morning. Lord God is coming tonight and he will deal with your oppressors and will shield you from the destroyer. When death sees the lamb's blood on your doors, he will pass over your homes. He will not hurt any of you. Once we leave from this town, we must remember this night. From now on, we all will celebrate this night of the Passover. And the people did as the Lord commanded, Uh, what is this? It's happening. What's happening? It's like Moses warned us. Run for your life. Ah! And as the midnight came to pass, all the firstborns of Egypt were struck. The city started echoing with cries. Oh, great God! No! No, my son, not my son. <sighs> what happened? The death. It has passed us. Thank God. Yes, but pity the firstborn of Egypt. My son. My friend, I'm so sorry. Don't say anything. Take your people and leave. I don't care for anything now. Thank you. And... And... Don't say a word. I will never forget what you did. Just leave. And that day, all the Hebrews left the city of Egypt. They were finally free. Free from slavery, hardships and all their sorrows. Thank you, Moses. I just did what God asked me to. Where are we going? We are going to the promised land. Where is this promised land? I don't know. He will guide us. And the Lord guided them through the day and the night.
Come on, this way. After traveling for many days, they reached the shores of the sea. What am I supposed to do now, God? How am I going to cross this vast sea? I was a fool. I shouldn't have let them leave. Bring them back. I want all of them back. But Moses? I want him dead. Kill Moses. Kill him. Ready the horses. We leave now. The Pharaoh is coming to kill us all. Are you happy now? You brought us here to die. We were at least alive in the city. Now you are going to get us killed. You are going to die today, Moses. Kill them! Kill them all! Moses! Moses! What are we going to do? We must do something quick. The Pharaoh is here. I know what to do. Do not be afraid. We have God on our side and he will never allow anyone to harm you. But we are stuck here. What are we going to do? Help us God. It was a miracle. God parted the sea to let Moses and his people pass. Did you see that, my lord? Don't stop. We'll cross the sea and catch them at the other bank. The Egyptians followed them into the seas. But when all Hebrews reached safely on the other side, God made the water return. Ah! There is no one like you, God. You have saved your chosen people. You have taken us out of slavery, out of Egypt. You saved us, Moses. Thank you. I did nothing. I was just following God's word. We still have a long way to go. Come on, let's go. On to the promised land. Moses walked for many days in the desert. They had no food to eat and no water to drink. People began to doubt him. What kind of plan is this? No food, no water. Are you going to kill us? What's your plan? Yes, what is your plan? You always complain. Didn't God take care of you like a father? Hasn't he promised you a great land for your home? But we are hungry. And thirsty. Can't you do anything? We are dying out here. If God provides you with water, will you stop complaining then? Yes, but there is no water around here. What are you doing? See how God loves you. Water! Come on everyone, water! Moses, Moses! What is it now? 
We could use some food, you know. Everyone is hungry. Lord, these people are driving me mad. I don't know what they want. I have heard the murmurings of Israel's children. Tomorrow morning, you will get food from heaven. Thank you, Lord. And in the morning it was so. On the ground lay the food. People were really happy. This is manna, the bread from the heavens. Take it, eat it. Once you are ready, then we will start marching. They continued their journey in the desert. But people continued to question why they were led out of Egypt. They demanded more and more from Moses. We are tired of manna. We want meat. You will get your meat. <laughs> they continued their journey for many more days and they finally arrived at foothills of Mount Sinai. Stop! Everyone stop! We will camp here for a few days. Where are we, Moses? Do you see that mountain? It's called Mount Sinai. It was here that God appeared to me. Are you going up there, Moses? Yes, I'm going up there. Alone? But... Master! Master! <laughs> Joshua, my general. Master, if you are going up there, then let me join you. Hmm. But it... Don't worry, Master. I am your general, remember? I will follow you wherever you go. <laughs> All right, you can come with me. Aaron, I will be gone for many days. Please ask the people to remain patient and wait for me. People camped at the base of the mountain and Moses and Joshua climbed up the mountain. They walked for a long time. Joshua, I must go alone from here. Don't worry, Master. I will wait for you here. And he climbed up and up into the thick cloud. He stayed for 40 days and 40 nights in darkness waiting for God. In the meantime, people down below had become impatient. They started revolting. And one day, they came before Aaron. He's not going to come back, ever. He abandoned us. It's been so long. Moses will come back. Moses is coming back. Trust him. I don't think so. Don't you believe so? It's been many days. I don't think he's coming back. We are all going to die. You. We want you to make a god for us. What? There's only one god who liberated us from Egypt. No. We want a real god. A god who we can see and touch. I... I can't do that. If you don't make us one, then you will die. Huh? How dare you? <laughs> and you will die too. Make us what we want, or else both of you are going to die. Oh dear. Give all your jewelry to Aaron. Give him all your silver too. And Aaron will make us a real god. A golden cow. Aaron was forced to make an idol out of gold as the children of Israel wanted. Please forgive me, God. Aaron worked for a long time and when it was finally ready, he presented it to the people. Here it is. Here is your God made out of gold. Isn't this what you wanted? Isn't this? Move away, you. Here is our God. Let's celebrate. Let's dance, people. I'm sorry, Moses. And after 40 days and 40 nights, God appeared before Moses. Moses, 
Moses, God, I give to you the way to live. I give to you my Ten Commandments. Remember them, teach them. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not worship false gods. You shall never take my name in vain. You shall keep the Sabbath day holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not lie. You shall never want what belong to others. Thank you, God. Thank you. Master! Master! Joshua! Come, Joshua. It's time to go back. What is that sound? Hmm. I... I think it's the sound of celebration. Celebration? It's Moses. So what? We don't need him anymore. We have our own beautiful golden god. Is this how you repay your god? He released you from slavery and yet you doubted him. You will repay for this. Look at this. He gave his commandments to us. All who believes in God, walk toward me. Are you people crazy? Don't go. We have our own God. Come back. He wants to be like the Pharaoh in Egypt. He wants to rule over us. Stop it. Witness the judgment of the Lord. When Moses threw down the tablets, God punished everyone who committed idolatry. Lord, please forgive them. They are sorry for what they did. If you are still angry, then punish me first. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Moses then went back to the mountain. God forgave him and gave him another set of tablets. But the sins of the children of Israel caused them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years until the older generation who did not believe perished. And finally, they arrived on the banks of Jordan. Moses, this is the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I have let you see it with your own eyes, but you shall not walk on it. Only the people you led will. Thank you, Lord. Master, Joshua, come here. Why did you call me Master? Joshua, look over there. Do you see that on the other side of the river? Master, is that, is that the promised land? <laughs> yes, Joshua, it is the promised land. <laughs> we made it, we made it, Master. I knew you would lead us there, Master. I never doubted for a second. Thank you. What are we waiting for then? Let's lead our people to the promised land. They will be elated with this news. Come down and lead us, Master. No, Joshua. You will have to lead them. What? But why? Lord spoke to me. My time is up, Joshua. He told me that I am only allowed to see the promised land, not to walk on it. It is you who have to lead them now. But Master, don't forget it is God who gave you the promised land. You must hold fast to this covenant. I will, Master. All right, you should go now and tell them about this good news. Yes, Master. 
Father, I have a doubt. Yes, Lucy. Did they reach the promised land after Moses died? Hmm. Yes, they did. But only after a lot of struggle. I will tell you about that in the next episode, Joshua's Battle. Goodbye, children. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with. Or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos. I am bored. Me too. Where's Matthew? Oh, don't worry. He's playing with Jimmy over there. Ha 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 ha. Now go and fetch this Jimmy. Come on. Hmm. Hey, I have an idea. What is it? Let's play as if we were Moses and his family. That's a great idea. I'll play the role of Moses and you can be Miriam, Moses' sister. Yes, that's fun. Alright, let's look the path. Moses always carried a stick. I need to get a stick. And Miriam wore a scarf. I'll get one. I need a long stick. Hey, that looks good. No, this is too small. I need something that's longer. Ha, that one looks good. Mmm, this is a good one. Now I'll look like Moses. Ha ha ha. God, my people are hungry. Please give us some food. God, my people are hungry. Please give us some food. Nothing. <sighs> ah. Can it be? No. George, George. Huh? So it was you who threw that stick. What stick? Oh, that one. I'm so sorry. I was playing fetch with Jimmy. That's all right. I forgive you. You what? Oh, we didn't tell you, right? We are playing the story of Moses. And who else is playing? Lucy is playing as my sister, Mariam. Can I play with you too? I'll be Aaron. Don't be stupid. Aaron was elder than Moses, but you are younger than me. Then I'll be Joshua, Moses' general. Hmm, that's a good idea. You can be my general. Now come with me, my general. Yes, master. <laughs> you I went to get this now don't I look the part you look okay so what do we do now why don't we part this river yes let me try that all right we'll follow you Lord me and my people have to cross the stream. Please help us by parting water. It's a shallow stream. You can walk to the other side. Huh? Did you hear that? God, is this, is this? Do you still want me to part the river? Father John, it's you? <laughs> Good, Good morning, morning father. father. Good morning, children. I thought it was God that I heard, but it was you. <laughs> I was just playing. So what are you guys up to? You look nice in that scarf, Lucy. Thank you, Father. We were playing as Moses, 
I was playing the role of Moses. See the sick? Hmm. And I am Miriam, Moses' sister. That's nice. So that's why you were wearing that scarf. And who are you, Matthew? I am Joshua, Moses' general. <laughs> you would make a cute general, Matthew. Do you know the full story of Joshua, Matthew? Is there more? Yes, of course. It was Joshua who had led people to the promised land after Moses died. Remember? Yes, but I thought the story was over. But didn't the Israelites reach the promised land after Moses died? Yes, but getting into the promised land wasn't that easy. Father, can you please tell us the full story? Of course. Mm, let's sit over there. Moses died before reaching the promised land. But before he died, Moses entrusted the task of leading the people to his general, Joshua. And Joshua finally arrived on the banks of the river, Jordan. Children of Israel, we will camp here at the banks of river Jordan. You can rest now. You can put down the back, my son. <sighs> huh? A boy is tired. I'm not tired at all, mother. Can I go to play now? Hmm. Please, mother. Please, please. <laughs> all right, all right. But don't go near the river. The current is too strong. Thank you, mother. Ha ha ha. Look at our boy. Thank you, God, for giving us such a good son. <sighs> what, dear? Our people should have trusted Moses and because of what we did, we have been wandering for so long. Forty years. <laughs> this is so vast. How are we going to cross this? I'm grateful to you for showing me the promised land. Joshua. Joshua. Huh? Who? Who is that? It's me, Joshua. God? I have chosen you, Joshua, to lead the Israelites to the Promised Land. No. No, I can't. Moses was a great leader. But I... I am just an ordinary man. I can't lead them. There is greatness in everyone who has faith, Joshua. But I can't lead them. I'm frightened. Yes, you will face many dangers. But be strong and always remember that I will never leave you. And I'm grateful to you for choosing me to lead them. But please tell me, God, how are we going to cross this river? The river is very swift and it's very deep too. The people camped on the banks of the river. And is there enough food as well? Yes, sir. We have enough in stock for a few days. Hmm. God will surely help us. Huh? huh? Who are you? Huh? Go away if you don't want to get yourself killed. I, I think he is the king of Jericho. The king? I am Joshua, the leader of Israelites. God has promised us this land. Is that so? Well, I am the king of Jericho and I will never let you enter. We were liberated from slavery in Egypt and we have traveled this far following God's word. Please let us enter our promised land. The promised land? <laughs> Your God promised, not mine. Now get away before I call my troops. We have God on our side. <laughs> you and your God. 
Do you see this river? Do you think you can cross this river? Huh? And if you manage to cross this river, then you will be facing our wall. We have the strongest wall in the world. So understand this. If you cross this river, then you better be prepared for a fight. Our God had protected our leader Moses, and he will protect us this time too. <laughs> yes, I've heard about the Red Sea, how your God part of the Red Sea, but he has no power here. Stay away from Jericho, or my army will destroy you. Joshua, what are we going to do? Don't worry. Have faith in our Lord. We will cross the river when God tells us to. We have full faith in you, sir. Hmm. But I'm worried about the king of Jericho. He's like the waters of this river. Dangerous. It's getting late, sir. We must head back to our camp now. Yes, let's go back. Joshua. Huh? You two walk ahead. I'll be right with you. Where are you, God? God! Do not be afraid of the king. If you trust me, then I will protect you. I do trust in you, Lord. Hmm. I need to know more about this king of Jericho. I have to know how huge his wall is. And also I must know how big his army is. Huh. I've got an idea. I'll ask two of my men to sneak into the city and see for themselves. Joshua selected two men to sneak into Jericho and tell him about the king's army. He also asked his spies to find more about the wall. Ouch! Why did you stop? Shh! Look over there. What is there? Ah! Hide! Quick! But King, what if those Israelites cross the river? <laughs> you really think they can? They will die if they try crossing it. Hmm, that's true. But do you think that God will help them? Nah, I think they are all making things up. I am their leader. Moses was a cunning man. He tricked those people to come out of Egypt. What was that? Food and meat from the sky? <laughs> they are all fools! I have never heard of such a thing before. But the parting of the Red Sea, there are many eyewitnesses. That must be a trick too. Now let's stop wasting our time thinking about those fools. We are getting late for the meeting with the council. Let's go. Yes, sir. Shh. Don't make any sound. Look there. Oh, the king is having a meeting with their army. Ha <laughs> ha Come on, start counting. Commandos, one, two, three, four. Foot soldiers, ten, twenty, thirty. Hoses, two, four, six. Who are you? Huh? Think we have been spotted. Answer me. Who are you? What are you doing here? We? We? Just run. Now he turns around and start running. Huh? They are spies. Catch them. Catch those spies. No! Ah! Hmm, my name is Rahab and I'm just helping you. But, but... There's no time to talk. Come this way, quick! Uh... <sighs> yeah, yeah. 
They must be somewhere around here. You, you go that way. And I will go this way. Come, quick. Where is she taking us? I don't know. But what if she takes us to the king? What if she's lying to us? Under here, quick. Open the door. Open it. They are here. Quick, get under it. Let's go. Huh? By the order of the king, open this door. Open this door or we will break this down. I'm coming. What is it, sir? Move aside. Where are these spies? Spies? What spies? Did you see two men running down the street? Oh, those men. I saw them running towards the city gates. Everyone, they are headed towards the city gates. Get over there. <sighs> Rahab told the Israelites it was safe to come out of their hiding place. We don't know how to thank you, sister. Yes, it was a brave thing that you did. But why did you risk your life for us? Yes, why? We are just strangers. Everyone here in Jericho have heard about you. We know that you are coming for our land. We have heard about your God who rules the heaven above and the earth below. And we have also heard that your God is so powerful that he parted the Red Sea for Moses. It's all true, sister. Moses was a great leader and God was with him. We kind of miss him though. You must get out of town and hide in the hills for three days. Here, take this. You can use this to get down. Thank you, sister. God bless you, Rehab. You are very kind. Wait, one more thing. What is it? When your people attack the city, will you? Will you? Say it, sister. Can you please ask your men to spare me and my family? Sure. You have been kind to us, sister. We will ask our men to spare you and your family. Leave this red rope hanging from your window. It will be a sign that no one in this house is to be attacked. Thank you. Thank you so much. Joshua's spies did like Rahab had told them. They hid themselves in the mountain for three days. They went back to Joshua with their report. That's what Rahab told us, sir. Is it true? Yes, they are all afraid of us. They are afraid of our God. Let's thank God. He has done as he said. We are going to cross the river tomorrow. The next day, all the Israelites marched towards the river. Help us, God. Bring forth the Ark of Covenant. Joshua directed the priest to carry the ark into the river and hold it there. Behold, the power of God! As the crowd watched, a miracle happened. The priest held up the ark and God separated the water. Mother, look! Wow! He is doing it just like Moses. God is with Joshua just like he was with Moses. Thank you, God. Joshua, you have to choose 12 men. Tell them to get 12 rocks from the middle of the river, from where the priest stood. Carry them and put them down where you stay tonight. From now on, your children will ask the meaning of these rocks. You will tell them what happened here today. You will tell them about the Ark of the Covenant and how the water parted when the Ark of Covenant was taken into the river. 
These rocks will remind Israelites about what happened here today. Come, son, quick. <laughs> Father, look at the fish. We have to get to the other side, son. Now come on. Come on, everyone, quick. Let's keep going. And so, every Israelite crossed the river. They set up a camp outside the walls of Jericho. It's getting late. We are all done, sir. That's good. One evening, Joshua was strolling outside the walls of Jericho. I have been following God's command without even a question. But how am I going to fight the king of Jericho and his army? Joshua. God, you won't need swords or armor, Joshua. You just need to have faith in me. You have to do as I say to defeat the king and the army of Jericho. Next day morning, Joshua asked Israelites to form a long line. Remember, do exactly as God has instructed. You shouldn't utter a word. You shouldn't make any sound. First, the seven priests marched to carry a ram's horn. Then the priest marched with the Ark of the Covenant. And behind them marched the soldiers carrying their arms. They marched one time around the city. Hmm, what are they up to? I don't think they are here for fighting. I think this is just a parade. <laughs> but, but why are they doing this? Uh, ah, don't worry. They are just fools. And they are walking away. Mm. I wonder what was the meaning of all this. Come on, we have better things to do. When do we attack the city, Master? We are not going to attack it. We will march around the city again tomorrow. What? What? And remember, you must keep quiet. Not a word tomorrow. The only sound can come from this ram's horn. So the Israelites went to the walls again and marched around the city once. <laughs> Every day for six days they marched around the city once but nothing happened for six days. You Israelites are fools and the biggest fool is your leader Joshua. <laughs> The people grew restless and on the morning of the seventh day and went to his tent. Joshua, can I come inside? Yes, yes please. Joshua, what are you doing? Our people are tired of this marching around the city. We need a soldier as our leader. Yes, a soldier who can lead us to a war. Yes, you are right. I'm not a soldier, but I have faith in our God. He won't let us down as long as we trust in Him. Today is the seventh and the last day. Who will come with me? I will. I'm sorry. We trust in Sir. All of us will join you. Tell everyone we will march today. And they did march. But this time, instead of marching around the city walls for six full days, Joshua asked them to march around the walls seven times. And during the seventh time around, they did something that surprised everyone. Everyone started shouting. Yell and scream to the top of your voices. Your voices should raise the heavens to thank God. Shout, for God has given us the city of Jericho. What is this? What are they doing? My Lord, look, the walls are trembling. Ah, 
A few rams horns and their faith in God, the Israelites captured Jericho. Joshua, thank you. Thank you so much. You don't have to thank me. Thank God. He's the one who did this. I merely followed his commands. Joshua, Joshua. Yes? This is Rahab. She is the one who helped us. Thank you, Rahab. Thank you for helping my people. Are we allowed to stay here? Of course you can. It will be our pleasure. Don't touch me. Stop. Stop. Keep walking. You have no right to. Uh, uh, I am the king. No, you are not. We have this land now. When I told you that God has promised us this land, you laughed at us and you called us fools. You insulted our God. Look who's the fool now. Now walk. Ah, no, stop. We are home. After Jericho was captured, the Israelites kept moving forward and forward, conquering more and more land, all because of Joshua and his faith in God. Wow, that was such a wonderful story. I'm glad you liked it, Lucy. Which story are you going to tell us tomorrow, Father? Hmm, I think I'll tell you the story of Ruth Naomi tomorrow. I'm sure you're going to like it. Come on, kids, it's getting late now. Get back to your houses. Quick, quick. Goodbye, children. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with, or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos. Are you sure Matthew's at the church? Yes, he is hanging around with Father John. Oh, I hope he doesn't irritate Father John with his questions. Yeah, I know. He can be a little irritating sometimes. There they are. Come, let's go there. Good morning, Father. Good morning, children. Hello, Matthew. Hello, George. Father, what are you doing here with Matthew? I was just telling him about the book of Judges. Book of what, Father? Oh, haven't you heard about the book of Judges? No, Father, we haven't. Hmm, all right. Come here and sit down. I'll tell you a story from the book of Judges. Have you heard the story of Samson and Delilah? No, father. Who were they, father? Samson depicts the tragic fall of a mighty man. His birth was considered a miraculous event. And even before his birth, his life was dedicated to God as a Nazarite. The angels had warned Samson's parents to never cut his hair. And since Samson's life was dedicated to God, he was not supposed to drink wine and he also shouldn't eat unclean meat. He was sent by God to protect the Israelites from the Philistines. Delilah, it's getting dark. We must get back home. Hey! Look at that!
Delilah, we must go back. What? What was that? Ah, uh, Delilah, over there. your name? Uh? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Delilah. I'm from Philistine. Delilah! Delilah! Oh, you're alive. He saved me. You are Samson, right? Yes, I am. How dare you meddle with the affairs of Philistines! You should be thanking me. I saved one of yours. Now go away. <sighs> Come on, let's go now. Who was he? He is Samson, an Israelite. We ruled over them. He is so strong. Samson was gifted with extraordinary physical strength. It was given to him by the God to save the people of Israel. The people of Israel had disobeyed God and so God sent Philistines to rule over them. For 40 years, the Philistines had made the lives of Israelites miserable. But now it was time for God to send the Philistines away. The Philistines had heard of Samson's strength. I tried to question him. But he walked away. That arrogant Israelite. We must teach him a lesson. We can't afford to let him go on like this. Yes, he could be a danger to Philistine someday. We must destroy him now. But we don't know where he lives. Hmm. Attack the Israelites and he will come to save them. The Philistine army seized Lehi, a town full of Israelites. They knew that Samson would come to save his people. Please don't hurt us. Please. Why are you doing this? What wrong have we done? We will stop only when you tell us where Samson is. Samson? But we don't know where he is. You don't know? Then go and find him. Ugh. We will have fun with your people until then. Now go! Yes sir, we will find him. So, all the men from the town of Lehi, some 3,000 of them went up to the nearby mountains searching for Samson. Samson! 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 Huh. Who could that be? Samson! Who are you? What do you want? 
We are coming from the town of Lehi. The Philistines are attacking us because of you. What? Because of me? I must help them. Wait there. I will calm down. Yes, Samson. They are beating all our women and they are not sparing any children too. Please, Samson. Please come and save us. What do you want me to do? We have to tie you up and hand you over to them. Unless we do that, Lehi will be destroyed. Hmm. I shall come with you and you can tie me up. But... But what? But you must promise me that you won't kill me. Thank you, Samson. We promise that we will not hurt you. All right. Then wait there. I'm coming down. And so they tied Samson with two new ropes and they brought him to the city. Here, sir. We have brought you what you wanted. Now please let our people free. <laughs> Not so strong now, are you? Uh. Take him to the city gates. We will hang him there. But suddenly, the power of God came over Samson and he broke the ropes around his arms as if they were thread. There was an old jawbone of a donkey lying in the dirt. Samson picked it and swung over his head. Samson, I must go and help him. Samson, Samson. Ah, Delilah, Delilah. Yes, it's me. Wake up, Samson. Delilah, with the jawbone of a donkey, I killed a thousand men today. Yes. You are a great warrior, but you are wounded. Please come to my house. Where am I? This is Gaza. This is where I live. Please come with me. All right. Take me to your house. Delilah took Samson to her house and tended his wounds. Samson was blessed by God and his wounds healed quickly. The wounds have healed. He is much stronger than I thought. But the Philistines were getting restless. They were getting angry of all trouble Samson was causing. They had to find out what made him so strong. Over a thousand men dead. More people injured. Who is this Samson? I heard he got his powers from God himself. Those stupid Israelites. They believe all stupid things. We must find the secret of his strength. Only then can we defeat him. Uh, uh, but how? Hmm. Let's go to Delilah. Maybe she can trick him into telling the secret of his strength. I think it's a brilliant idea. Only a woman can learn the secret from him. Do you think she will agree to help us? Who is going to refuse bags of silver? <laughs> After a few days, the leaders of Philistine came to Delilah's house when Samson was not around. Delilah, you must save our people from the hands of Samson. You are the only person in this world who can find the secret of his strength. But I tried. I have asked him several times, but he never told me the truth. 
lie. You are lying. Unless you tell us his secret, we'll burn you alive. Ah! Ah! Have you forgotten the 10,000 pieces of silver promised? Mm. Ah! Leave her! Ah! 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 I did. I did my best. But he never tells me the truth. I tied him with seven new bow strings, bound him with new ropes, wove his hair into the wrap of the web. But, but... Stop playing games with us. We'll come back tomorrow. If you don't get the secret by then, come, let's leave. Huh? What am I going to do? That night, Delilah poured wine in Samson's glass and got him drunk. Samson, you have fooled me so many times. I wonder if you love me at all. Oh my darling, I love you more than I love my own life. No, you don't. You are just lying. No, my dear. It's true. If you really love me, then why don't you tell me the secret of your strength? My love, ask me anything but that. If I reveal that, then it'll be my end. Ah, my head! Why is it so? Tell me, dear. I'm sorry, dear, but I can't. You don't trust me? That's why you are not telling me the secret. I... I trust you. Tell me, dear. Delilah, my love, I'm a Nazarite. Nazarite? What does that mean? The Lord, the Lord has chosen me. I shouldn't... I shouldn't drink wine. I shouldn't cut my hair. I should always be at his service. Nazarite, huh? Sleep well, my dear. Your secret is safe with me. Shh! Shh! Here! Ask the leaders to come here. I have found the secret. Yes, I will. That night, Delilah summoned the leaders of Philistine and revealed the secret to them. It's his hair. Once you have cut his hair, then he will lose all his powers. <laughs> so it's his hair. Cut his hair now. Yes, my lord. What? Delilah! Delilah! Who are they? <laughs> Good job, Delilah! Here is your reward. Delilah! How could you do this to me? I trusted you. I'm sorry, my dear. But they threatened to kill me. I'm sorry. I... I should have never trusted you. <laughs> Where is your power now, Samson? You fool! Untie me and I will show you. You filthy Philistinian! How dare you! Hold him! Hold him! Leave me, you! I'm going to poke your eyes out. Let's see how you fight without your eyesight. No! No! Please stop! You promised me! We kept our word. We didn't kill him. And you got your money too. 
Now move aside. No. I will not let you. I said move you. No. 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 Ah! That night, Philistine kings grabbed Samson and they did a terrible thing. They poked his eyes out, tied him with chains and dragged him away. They locked him in a prison cell and they put him to work turning a great wheel. Day after day, Samson turned the heavy wheel. Ah! 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 Delilah, how could you do this to me? I was sleeping so peacefully in your lap. Why should I blame her? I'm the one who took the vows. My God, how many failures I sinned. I broke my vows. Lord, be merciful to me. Please forgive all my sins. Please. <laughs> Samson realized his mistakes, but there was nothing he could do now. He was blind and shut in a prison cell. He had lost all his powers too. He prayed to God day and night seeking mercy, and slowly his hair started to grow back. <laughs> that stupid Samson. He thinks his god is greater than our great god Dagon. He is a fool and he is rotting now in prison. This should be a lesson to everyone who stands against our god Dagon. I say we must celebrate. We must celebrate our victory over Samson. Yes, let's have a feast to celebrate our victory. The leaders of Philistine organized a feast to celebrate their victory. They thought their god Dagon had given them their victory over Samson. Of course their god had nothing to do with it. There is no god Dagon at all. Hey, listen. Let's bring Samson out here so we can have some fun with him. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea. It would be fun. Bring Samson here. Yes, my lord. Huh? Where am I? Keep walking. Ah. Uh. Take him to the stage and fasten him between the pillars. Yes, and leave the chains long enough so that he can dance. Dance. <laughs> it would be fun to watch that blind giant dance. What? What are you doing? Uh, where am I? You are at the temple of our great god Dagon. Uh? Dear people, the sacrifice is over. Now you can watch and enjoy the dance by Samson. Ha <laughs> uh? Start dancing you blind giant. Yay, start. We are waiting. Dance, you fool. Ah. Oh. Yeah, beat him more. It will be fun to watch this giant dance in pain. Can't you hear? You are us to dance. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. No. It's because of me. It's all my fault. The temple was crowded with over 3000 men and women and they were all having a great time making fun of Samson and his god. But Samson was quietly praying. Dear Lord, please remember me, your servant. My god, give me back my strength. Just one more time. Please God, help me this one last time. Please. 
God gave him back his powers. And when Samson realized this, he walked between two large pillars and placed his hands on them, one on each side. Please, God! He pushed with all his might. The pillars gave away and the stones of the great building came crashing down in a thundering roar of cloud and dust. It all came tumbling down on the five evil kings and the evil people who were celebrating there. The rock fell on Delilah too. Samson too died with thousands of other people. And that's the story of Samson and Delilah. Did you like this? Yes, Father. So, shall I ask you a few questions? Who can tell me who the judges were? Judges were the liberators sent by God whenever Israelites were suffering. That's correct. And who can tell me what a Nazarite mean? A Nazarite is a person whose life was consecrated to the service of God. He would be under the vow to never consume alcohol, to never cut his hair and not to eat any unclean food. That's good, Lucy. And what was the secret of Samson's strength? Samson was a Nazarite and because of this, God had given him immense power. And how did Samson lose his power? Delilah tricked Samson into drinking wine and when he was asleep, they cut his hair too. Excellent, Lucy. Let's leave now and when you come tomorrow, I will tell you the story of Ruth. Who was that father? Was she an Israelite too? No, my child. She was not an Israelite. God does not favor any particular race. Ruth was a Gentile woman and she became the great-grandmother of King David from whose dynasty came the Messiah. We shall learn her story tomorrow. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, children. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos.